What's up guys, Justin here with the renderingessentials.com back with another Twin Motion new feature tutorial for you. So big news yesterday, the Twin Motion 2022.1 release preview version was uploaded to the Epic Games launcher, meaning you can download it and try out the new version of uh, Twin Motion 2022. So I thought in this video we'd talk through some of the new things you can expect inside of this new version. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So yesterday this video was dropped on Twin Motion's um, YouTube channel and it shows you a preview of some of the things that we can expect inside of the new version of 2022.1. Not only though does it show us a quick preview of some of the things contained inside of this version, it also tells us that if we go to the Epic Games launcher, we can actually download this new version. All right, so if you want to download the new version of Twin Motion, the 2022.1 preview version, you can do that through the Epic Games launcher under the Twin Motion tab. There's an option right here for install. So you can just download this and install it on your computer. Note that it is a preview version, so um, it's obviously not 100% complete, but it's going to let us use the new features in here. So um, first off, before we do that, what I want to do is I want to jump over into the Twin Motion roadmap and the Twin Motion release notes. So if you jump into the roadmap, which I will link to in the notes down below, it shows you the new features contained inside of this version. There are a lot of exciting new features contained in this version that uh, people have been asking for for a long time. So if you want to get to the full release notes, um, you can go into the released tab. You can click on the option for release notes right here. That's going to pop up this window that goes through the stuff in detail of what, what exactly has been changed. So I thought we could take a look at some of the bigger features that are contained inside of the new version, then we can dive a little deeper into them in the future. And so the first feature that's contained inside of this new version is the path tracing support. So the path tracing support is going to allow us to use real-time path tracing inside of our renderings um, in order to get those more realistic light bounces in here. So it's going to make your global illumination and shadows more realistic. Um, so things like reflections, everything like that, it's going to be more realistic as well. If we jump into Twin Motion, which by the way now comes with this awesome new sample scene, which is great. Um, so we can actually turn that on by jumping down into the settings. And under the renderer right here, there's an option for Path Tracer that you can click on. Note that for the path tracer to work, you do need to have a graphics card that's capable of doing the path tracing. So in addition, there's options in here to adjust the number of light bounces, as well as if you click in here, there's an option that's going to let you set the low, medium, or high, which is going to set the number of samples that are contained in here. Note obviously that the high version is going to take a lot longer than the low version. but if we look at the scene, notice the reflections that we're getting off the glass are really great reflections that are in here. Obviously, there is some denoising going on and things like that. You can kind of see the um, you can see the progress by looking at this little bar right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to click on this and jump over to low. And so when we click on low, notice how it's going to do a lot less samples and a lot less bounces, but you're still going to get a pretty decent result. So notice how if we zoom in here. So usually what I would recommend is turn that path tracer off until you get um, a little bit closer or into your view um, that you want to render. And then um, let's go ahead and let's turn it on. And notice how we're actually getting the reflections of what's behind us right here. Notice how if we were to jump to like a medium, for example, then we're going to get a better reflection result, but it is going to take longer. So um, that's something that you're going to have to kind of walk the balance on. But having the path tracing in here gives you a great option for those uh, for those uh, really realistic results you're looking for with the light bouncing, other things like that. All right, so in addition, and something that I am super excited about, um, we now have the ability to use HDRI Sky Domes inside of Twin Motion. So not only do we have the ability to use the HDRI Sky Domes, it also comes with an HDRI library of different Sky Domes. So you can access those from inside of Twin Motion just by just by going into your asset library over here, and there's an option right here for Sky Dome. And so there's multiple different Sky Dome sections in here that you can use. So like the morning and afternoon. Noon. Then you've got clear or cloudy or overcast, um, really whatever you want, but you can just drag those into your scene in order to use them. So if I drag this over, it's going to drop that sky dome in here and you're going to have the ability to adjust the rotation. Notice how your lighting adjusts as well. So this is a massive improvement over what we were able to do before. I am super excited about this. I mean, just looking at the way that the shadows look and the way that re the result looks, I mean, this is going to be a big deal for what you're going to be able to create 
with twin motion. So notice just the way that the lighting is coming off of the different materials. It just looks fantastic. So like I said, super excited about this new feature. So note that in addition, you can also come over to the sky dome image. You can click on the open button and you can, and you can bring in your own sky domes as well. So like for example, this is just one that I downloaded, I think from HDRI Haven, but notice that I can bring this in in the background. So not only can you use the built-in sky domes, you can use your own sky domes as well. And again, I would note that um, the implementation of this looks really good. So I'm really loving the result that I'm seeing in here. There's also an option in here to match the sun, which is also something that I love because if you match the sun, right, what that's gonna do is that's gonna match the brightest part of the sun with your sky dome so that it actually creates shadows in here. So really easy to use, super excited about this feature. It's gonna be a big deal for the results you can create inside of Twinmotion. So there's a ton of other new features contained in here as well. So for example, support for Megascan's 3D plants. I think that's something that we'd seen a little bit of, but you can access that all inside of Twinmotion. So the cool thing about that is um, that's basically in here is a link to the Quixel Megascans library. So you can come in here and you can adjust the plants and everything like that. But what this is gonna do is this is basically going to access that library and you can download the stuff. So instead of the installer getting shipped with all of these plants installed in here, you just click the download button. So that does keep the installer small. Being able to access these high quality plants is gonna be a huge deal. All right, so there, there's now support for bringing in point cloud data as well. I haven't had a chance to test this one, honestly, because I don't have any point cloud data to test in it. But if you are working with point clouds, being able to bring that into a rendering, um, there's some really interesting applications for that. So for those of you that use 3D mice, um, there's now 3D connection space navigator support. So you can use your 3D mouse inside of Twin Motion, um, which is really exciting, as well as there's been some improvements. So there's been some additional assets added, as well as some improvements to the decals function. So so we can jump over into the release notes to kind of take a look at those. So there's a material substitution table which is in here, which is basically designed to help you automate the um, replacement of materials from 3D software. So there's a more detailed look at this over here. I don't wanna to get too far into it right now, but basically it allows you control over the way those materials are mapped. I don't know if this solves the problem of materials getting like unlinked or replaced from a SketchUp model when you bring them over, but um, this is something that's definitely worth looking into a little bit more. So we talked about the plants and decals. There's also new furniture assets in here here. And something that I really like is the new demo scene. So the lake house retreat demo scene has been added. I really like when um, programs like this ship with demo scenes that have been set up the proper way because they really give us a clue as to how things should be set up, right? So you, you can look at this and you can see how, okay, they're using um, reflection probes, for example, to get better reflections in here. They give you a chance to really like look at everything and figure out how it's been put together to generate a great result. So I love it when we get demo scenes like this. So you can access that by going to file, demo scenes, lake house retreat. I think this is a really good idea so the beginners can learn how to use the program. So they've also got a feature where you can share sets of rendered 360 degree panoramas. Um, so through the twin motion cloud. So that's another one we may dive into in the future. So it's going to be a good way to share your renderings with clients and other people. All right, so I am massively excited about this new release. There's a ton of cool stuff contained in here. Um, I'll dive into some of the specifics um, in future videos, but I'd love to hear from you what your favorite feature is, how you feel about this new release. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.